Hey guys, welcome to my channel, where we talk about all things true crime, crazy and unknown historical events, ghost phenomena, and more. I also travel to some of the locations that I talk about to explore them, so if any of that is of interest to you, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button and even the bell icon if you want to join in on my upcoming adventures. Just really quick before we dive into the video, I got a few mixed comments on my last video about the sound quality, and I'm not too sure what the issue was. I hope I fixed the issue. Uh, thank you for your feedback though. Definitely leave a comment on this video if the sound quality is still not good. Today's video is about the nearly forgotten World War II era prisoner of war camp that is situated just off the 101 freeway near Santa Barbara, California. The only remnants of this camp that can be seen from the freeway as you drive by is a water tower peeking over the treetops. To be honest, I grew up in Santa Barbara and lived the majority of my life there, and I passed by this water tower many times, and I never knew that this camp existed. But for that matter, most people in Santa Barbara have no idea that Goleta once had Nazi soldiers living and working there. During World War II, there were about 600 prisoner of war camps throughout the United States for captured German and Italian soldiers and the War Department decided to detain them in the United States to relieve the fighting forces in Europe and provide labor for American farmers. In 1944, the existing Camp Cook, which is located near Lompoc, California, and is now the Vandenberg Air Base, was designated for German prisoners of war. Construction of a separate fenced-in area was built in a corner of this camp, and a few months later, the captured prisoners of war started arriving. Camp Cook was the main camp for the Southern California area, and 16 smaller camps were established that put prisoners closer to where they needed to be to work. The Goleta location was built on Edwards Ranch, which was an already existing worker camp and it was modified to be secure enough to hold the prisoners. The camp housed the prisoners for 14 months from October 1944 to December of 1945, and at one time there was about 250 prisoners. Although most of the prisoners of war were hardcore believers in Hitler's regime, and they also believed that Germany would prevail in the war, many of the prisoners had been captured by French or Algerian soldiers at first, and they were abused, starved, or used as slave labor by their captors. So they were actually relieved to be turned over to American troops that actually followed the rules of the Geneva Convention, which ensured that they would at least be kept clean, warm, and fed, and they were reportedly happy to work on the nearby ranches. Knowledge of the nearby camps was intentionally limited until the end of the war, partly to comply with the Geneva Convention, and also to avoid the fear of an enemy presence in such large numbers. Although most people who lived near the camps accepted the prisoners' presence, the government received hundreds of letters each week protesting their good treatment. Many demanded that the prisoners be killed immediately. The camp was enclosed by an eight-foot wire fence topped with barbed wire, and it had guard towers with machine gun mounts on each of them because technically they were prisoners of war, but many actually developed friendships with the guards. The campgrounds were landscaped by the prisoners with flowers, vegetables, and fruit. One report about the Goleta camp stated that the camp looked like a garden oasis, and many of the prisoners later said that they didn't even feel like prisoners at all. One soldier was even quoted saying that the best day of his life was when he was taken prisoner. Prisoners were offered religious services, English classes, and other topics, and they also received medical care if they needed it. They also had a variety of activities to pass the time, such as a sports field, a radio, library, small theater, and they were allowed to swim in the nearby ocean on a regular basis. Occasionally, the guards would even join them in these swims or other activities. They also formed an orchestra and would perform at the theater from time to time, but they also had to work. Since most American men had gone to fight the war, California had a shortage of workers on the ranches. At the Goleta camp, they were put to work harvesting lemons, cotton, walnuts, and other crops. They also processed the walnuts at a nearby packing house on Kellogg Avenue, which is in Goleta. The prisoners were also given instructional booklets, which were made by the University of California, to help explain the details of agricultural work, translated into German for them, which was called the Emergency Farm Labor Leaflet. 
The prisoners were even paid for their labor with coupons that could be used as they wished in the camp store, which sold all of the essentials. Prisoner of war camps were closed in June of 1946, and the prisoners were turned over to the European armies, who put them to work in their countries until their troops could return them from war duties. Some prisoners did not return to their countries until the early 1950s, and many of the prisoners of war fell in love with California, returning after the war to spend the rest of their lives here. By the end of the war, there was over 425,000 prisoners of war throughout the United States, and there were camps located all over the U.S. Some cities have acknowledged the former campsites with historical markers, but the site of the Goleta's prisoner of war camp is not very well known and rarely acknowledged by local officials. Although there's really not a reason to keep this part of history a secret, unless the treatment of the prisoners that was reported wasn't true, but from the sound of it, there wasn't anything to be ashamed of necessarily. The camp is a little bit out of town and in a very nondescript location, so maybe the history of the area will never be acknowledged at all. After the prisoners left, the camp was used for housing for the ranch workers. Reports say that the 50-foot-long huts were turned into modest accommodations with three rooms, a living room, kitchen, and a bathroom, but no bedrooms. Families of the ranch workers would reportedly sleep on their couch or even the floor sometimes. The camp was still surrounded by the barbed wire fence, and a bus stop was added so the kids could easily get to and from school, which was still located about 20 miles away. Unfortunately, the camp burned down in 1970, and the only structure that survived was the water tower. Over the years, the area has been used for different purposes. Recently, the show Love Island was filmed on the grounds of the old camp. Sorry not to ruin the illusion of reality TV, but yeah, if you didn't know, Hollywood is completely fake. But other than that, that was all of the information that I could gather on the former prisoner of war camp. If you want to read more first-hand accounts from the prisoners and other people that were working at the camp, check out the links that I'll put down in the description. Did you know about this prisoner of war camp or other prisoner of war camps? I definitely knew that there were other different camps around America, but I had no idea that there was one so close to where I grew up. Be sure to leave a comment below so we can keep the conversation going down there. But other than that, that is going to do it for this video today. If you learned anything new, definitely hit the like button and subscribe for new videos like this one, plus more topics like true crime, ghost phenomena, and others. But as always guys, I appreciate any and all support, and I will see you in my next video.